I would like to welcome everyone to my channel Moja Planeta TV and uh, my Planet TV. And my guest for today is Dr. Gilbert Renault, recall healing therapist. Uh, he's been traveling around the US and Canada and also uh, Europe uh, giving seminars on recall healing and total biology. And at uh, this time of year in Poland, uh, Poznan. Welcome, Dr. Gilbert. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me and hello to everybody who is listening and watching. So let me start by asking a very important question that people have been asking themselves for uh, forever. Why do we get sick? Uh, it's a big question. We say in recalling there are many ways to be sick and there are many ways to heal. But we also say that in order to heal, we need to understand the emotional trauma behind conditions and behavior. That's the first step of healing, and it's what Dr. Carl Jung used in psychoanalysis as well. Because when we go to a doctor, they would say, well, why do we get sick? Well, bacteria, viruses, statistics, genetics, and so on. But w when you take, for example, twins, and when you, you give them the same circumstances, the, the same environment, the same pool genes, and one of them gets sick and the other doesn't, then it, does, it doesn't explain anything. Absolutely. Does it? So normally, in recalling, you need to focus on the life of the person. And we start from the moment of the sickness and we go backward using the lifetime line of the person. And quite often we discover an important emotional trauma that has the basic of that pathology, that problem. We talk about disease, but sometimes it's just a behavior mm -hmm. or a reflex. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when I was preparing for, when I was um, uh, preparing for, for this uh, seminar, I something that really resonated with me and stuck with me was this uh, something that I read that during the times of war when people went to hiding in the basements when the bombing ca uh, yes. uh, came there were children and adults in the hiding and when uh, the children went, were observed they were in shock obviously so they were trembling and shaking and screaming and shouting yes. while the adults were just like stuck because they couldn't hold they, they they couldn't breathe because they didn't want to scare children so my question is um, is there any way that we could avoid storing this trauma in the body uh, first we need to be human and it's normal for the brain to store the trauma in the body but why does trauma is stored in the body because at the moment of the drama, people don't talk, don't verbalize, don't express. So we say, if you don't give an issue, it goes into the tissue, the body. So children, they shake, they cry, they, they have reaction. Yes, but you know what? The many are not sick for that yeah. because they take it out. Okay. Yeah. So I was wondering, reading that, is that an answer to our kind of uh, um, biological uh, uh, diseases. Is that an answer to verbalize when something bad happens to you? Yes, it's one of the solutions. Maybe it's not everything because you still have a problem to resolve sometimes. Mm -hmm. But we say the door entrance in the body for all diseases is when you feel something, you should say something and you swallow. <gasps> And we say all the waiting room of doctors and therapists are full of nice people. Why? Because at the moment of the drama, they smile, they swallow, they don't say f a word. Yes. And what they need is to say a word that will take it out. But when you say the word, it's like the wind. But if you don't say the wind, it creates a congestion of the liver, gallbladder. So it's like you swallow your anger and grudge, and it starts to work against you. This is why when somebody comes in recalling, we try to help the person to remember what happened. And sometimes it's very sad. But when you go deeper, the person was angry and pissed off. The problem, everybody is a nice person. And you need some time to make them pissed off to be able to verbalize and to take it out. Mm -hmm. And children, they do that spontaneously. Yeah, yeah. This is why after the bombing in the basement, the children went off and play and the adults would get sick. This is something that you also said in the seminar that often after the war, there was an outbreak of tuberculosis, as I recall. Yes, because during the war, people go into fear, tremendous fear, fear of dying for myself, for my children, or fear of what is going to happen. And, you know, the conflict of lungs is I can't take it anymore. It's a no way out. I cannot adapt anymore to a situation combined with the fear of dying. My God, 
when the hour is over, you heal this memory, this conflict. And all these conflicts trigger long and long at violi. This is why you hear TB flu at the end of a war like an epidemic. But Dr. Hammer in this work has discovered that these epidemics, like tuberculosis and, and, for example, of the Spanish flu at the end of the First World War, came as a repair phase of the conflict of the fear of dying. Okay, so we, before we talk about the repa repair phase, uh, let's talk about the process of healing. So is it enough that we realize what our conflict, inner conflict uh, is or has been, or the trauma that we lived, is it enough to get better? Did you notice that most of us, when we are sick, and you identify the reason why you're sick, is for a trauma that is already finished. Mm -hmm. It's like if nobody is aware that it's finished. And then when you realize that, quite often our sickness today starts to get better because we realize that the conflict is over. Now, some people still need to resolve the conflict of the time that is not over in the subconscious. So what you do, you verbalize. You Maybe if you still have the conflict, you try to resolve it with the person, or at least within yourself. But the best way is to talk about it by expressing the emotions and the drama of the time. It's like you catch up a little bit with time. okay? And sometimes you cannot resolve anything, but at least the fact you verbalize, as you give an issue, it doesn't go into the tissue. And then sometimes you still need to let go. And in biology, we say let go, let God. That means maybe the person that you had a conflict with does not need to be forgiven. But you, you need to let go because if you don't let go, your brain has just the bo this body that it controls to find a solution. Okay, so and quite often the disease I have is something that I did not let go. Okay, and you said also in the seminar, and I wrote it down, and I really liked it, that we are as sick as our secrets. Exactly. We are sick as our secrets, not what we don't see, what we forget that we have hidden inside of us. Okay? So, and sometimes mom, dad, they experience a drama during the pregnancy. They don't tell each other, but the child is a carrier in his life of that secret under the form of a behavior of a pathology. So when my mother tell me the story, that happened during my pregnancy. So then, oh, even if I'm 20 years later, I start to get better from the problem. Mm. Let's let's talk a bit about mother and father. You talked about the, the role of a mother and a father in the process of healing. Yes. And you said that they are the best healers because they know the answers. Yes, they, um, the, they know the answer to the question. Mm -hmm. And if they have the courage to talk. Yeah. Because we think about that. We say disease is the solution of the brain to survive a problem. If my mother is pregnant with me and she has a problem and she dies, I die in the womb. Mm -hmm. So my, her brain, at the moment of an overwhelming problem, downloads into my baby's brain the conflict that she cannot resolve. And then she forgets because it goes into her subconscious. But me, the baby, I'm, in, I'm her subconscious. So when I start my life, I have in my subconscious the drama that has happened to my parents, like if it has happened to me. So later in my life, I live the drama and I think it's me. And suddenly my mother says, do you remember when I was pregnant with you? That happened to me. Now my mother revealed a secret to me. <gasps> All my life I felt it was me. Yeah. And then from the moment she revealed the secret, my brain takes it out for, from the tissue because I give an issue to it. Mm. Yes, because sometimes people feel the way they feel, but they, but they know the, don't know the reason why. So, for example, they feel unwanted or they feel that they, they don't fit or they miscalculate things. Yes. <laughs> Commonly, this is an ex interesting example yes. that you've given with yeah. children that have problems with miscalculation. What yeah. can be the case with that? For example, when a, a mother brings a child who miscalculates in school in grade two, three, four, normally it should calculate well at that grade. So why it doesn't calculate well? So we check what happened in the early life of the child. If nothing happened there, we go into the project purpose, which is mainly the pregnancy time of the parents. And quite often we find that the parents had a drama 
about calculation regarding a budget, or they make a renovation, and their parents argue with the money. And so the stress for the parents is calculation. So the child is born and he cannot calculate because the calculation is a problem. Okay, that is the first reason, the budget. And some moment, they, they have their contraceptive method by the calendar, one, two, three, four. And then one day, her partner said, hey, darling, is it a good time tonight to have an intercourse? Wait a second. And so she calculates the calendar. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, darling, it's a good time. And then they have a good moment together. And the morning after that beautiful night, the mother looks at the calendar and she says, one, two, th oh, my God, mom miscalculated. So the baby is conceived thanks to a miscalculation. So now, later, the child is in school and he tries to succeed in calculation. But if he succeeds, he doesn't exist because the mother didn't succeed when she conceived him. Okay, so we just repeat. And when my mother tell me the truth, the day after I start to calculate well in school. Because what? Because all these years my brain thought it was me when it was mommy and daddy. Okay, so I healed with the truth of my parents. Mm -hmm. When, okay? So it's important to talk to the parents about the period of what happened uh, if there's a problem uh, yes. or sort of the disease. Uh, the, the, the time that, uh, during the pregnancy and before the pregnancy, right? The, yeah. the year before. Normally, you consider nine months before the conception mm -hmm. because our parents live in ambiance. And if are they happy, happy together? Did they go through a breakup? Oh, it is with work, with money, with the mother-in-law, father-in-law, our parents. And then when you conceive, are we drunk? Does, is there an accident? Does the condom break? Or uh, do, do we decide to conceive the child? Or oh, the child is conceived by accident? All that will have an impact on the child to come. Yes, and there are people who have um, um, the inclination towards the accidents, car accidents or yeah. everything. I had a client, he, the parents had an intercourse and the condom broke. So we say he's conceived by accident. So the brain of the child records that accident gave me life. So from time to time in his life, he, he has a tendency to have accident because for this brain, it's not bad an accident. Yeah, it's, okay? it's why he exists. Yeah. Uh, let's imagine that uh, someone comes to you for help and it's a woman, she's let's say 30 years old and with a uh, breast cancer. You always say that uh, the key for uh, is asking the right questions. What questions do we ask? For example, people who are watching, let's, let's just assume they have uh, some uh, diseases, some problems. What questions okay. should we ask ourselves? Okay. So, so now, let's say you talk about breast cancer, mm -hmm. okay? It's an important topic. But the first thing, we need to know which type of breast cancer. Mm -hmm. Does it touch the milk gland or does it touch the duct, the milk duct? And normally, in, in our Western society, intraductal breast cancer is more frequent than the one that touches the milk gland. So, intraductal breast cancer is linked with the conflict of separation the woman has experienced. So, which question do we ask? Madam, since when do you have that breast cancer? When have you been diagnosed? And then you explore the year before. And what happens normally, you find a memory of a separation with a partner, with a child, with someone she loved that she missed. She resolved the conflict, and intraductal breast cancer comes in the reparative phase at that moment. And then, let's say that woman, like you say, is 30 years old. So you say 30 years old, drama there. Then, why drama at 30? And you find a memory, half of the cycle at 15. And you find something at seven years old and a half. And then sometime at three years old, because you divide by two and you find cycles in the, behind the drama. But what is interesting, when you go backward before nine years old, for example, this woman has something at seven years old and three years old. It also corresponds to what happened at the third month of pregnancy and the seventh month of pregnancy. And you find quite often that, for example, in the case of that breast cancer, the father was not sure if he wanted to keep the child. And the mother was pregnant and she suffered of separation. And then we decide of the baby. Yes, but 
in the life of the baby later, that feeling of separation would be expressed through a drama of separation. A drama. Because these are all numbers, and biology, as you say, are numbers. The woman has cycles every 28 days, let's say. Yeah. The moon, uh, yeah. you know, the, yeah. yeah, and and so on. So it's all cycles, it's all connected. Yeah. It's not rocket science, it's just what it is, but people yeah. just don't pay attention to that. Exactly. We're, we're disconnected from nature, yeah. okay? And you know, that not that long ago, women had a period cycle linked to the cycle of the moon, mm. because we're connected with the moon. But now it's a little bit upside down because we're disconnected. But the brain is still connected with the cycle of nature. This is why, look for yourself, people. Um, if you had an accident at a certain age, divide by two by two by two and check what happened to you to this age that you get when you divide by two. You'll be surprised, okay? Mm -hmm. And why it works like that? Because the brain works in a mathematic f way and the brain has recorded everything that happened during the pregnancy and during the pr three previous generations of our ancestors. And the brain has a tendency to replicate that by cycle under the form of holographic memory. Okay, so, and we spent um, nine days of class to explain that in detail, yeah. okay? So we will not go into that, but what's interesting also is um, that you don't work with children, we don't work with children with uh, recall healing, but we work when there's something wrong with the children, yeah. we work with the parents, yeah. and that's interesting. Yes, but I I if you're a pedagogue, if you have, if you, your job is to work with children, you yeah. can apply that to children, but when you want to work with children with effectiveness, you work with the mothers first, because the mother remembers everything, most everything of what happened during the pregnancy. Maybe not at first, but if you ask her a question, her brain will start to research and she will remember. So me, in recalling, when the child has a problem, I work with the mother mm -hmm. and the child heals. Why? Oh, it gets better at least. Why? Because the mother is connected with her child. And as soon as she makes connection from brain to brain, heart to heart, the child receives that information. Yes, and it's amazing how, how it works. And uh, you, you give a number of different examples that are so, uh, so interesting, and you go into details with that. We don't have time for that today, but yeah. I re strongly recommend uh, the book because you give a number of uh, examples there. And it's available in English as well? It's uh, available in English, in Russian, in Hebrew, in Hungarian, in Romanian, and soon in Spanish, and so... So, uh, the, the, uh, what, what I really want um, to come out of this interview is that I think your job is really wonderful because what you're doing is you're giving back the power to people because people feel powerless. Uh, people feel that when they get, get sick, mm -hmm. it's out of their control. And what we're talking about here is like it's giving control back to us. Yes, and what, what we do in recording, let's say we let our clients in the hand of his doctor, but we work on the emotional trauma. And then if we work well, if the clients make the right connection, when he goes to see his doctor, the doctor says, what did you do? The doctor identify the problem or the improvement. And if it doesn't work what we do, because it happens sometimes, the doctor is there to, to take care of the client. So with this is why in therapy of recalling, we don't interfere with the medical protocol. Uh, we do not, but sometimes there is a case when the doctor says to the woman who cannot get pregnant, for example, there is anything wrong with her on biological level, but he says, well, it's, it's, it's in your head. But what then? In those cases, right? So it's, that's, it's, that's my passion. Yeah. So when a woman comes to see me because she cannot be pregnant and everything's all right, I explore with her and her partner what is the relationship they have between. And you see quite often, if a woman cannot get pregnant, it's because sometimes her husband or partner cannot make her feeling safe. Okay? Or sometimes she has something that makes her husband not safe about her. So we say, are you alpha for your husband? And are you alpha for your wife? And we talk about that, it's and we have pretty good results. And it's again biologic, because if a woman doesn't feel safe, she doesn't want to have children, because they won't, be, uh, they won't feel safe, right? Absolutely. They might not survive, in so a way. So the brain of a woman will allow her to be pregnant the day she feels safe. Yeah. 
And it's that's amazing. Yeah, it's 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 just it. On one hand, it seems so easy, but it's it's on an unconscious level, right? It's always yeah. unconscious. Yeah. yeah. Um, Dr. Gilbert, I, the last thing I wanted to ask you is uh, the question that I always ask my uh, mm -hmm. guests: mm -hmm. What is the thing? that people don't know about your field or expertise, which is diseases, what people don't know about diseases? Um, most people don't know that our own brain is the author of the, our, our own disease. Because when we fail to resolve a problem in our life and we cannot find a solution, it creates a pressure and a stress. And our brain, in order to release the stress, has just the body that it controls to find a solution. And a disease is the solution of the brain to a problem that they cannot resolve. So a disease is, in, is in a way, uh, good for us? At first, the disease is the solution of the brain. Mm -hmm. It seems to, go, to be good. Yeah, but that disease can kill me yeah. in two years from now. Yes, but if my brain doesn't do download the stress, I might die when I cross the street because I'm not present to my environment. I'm stuck in the conflict of my problem. I'm too much in stress. Yeah, uh, let, let me just um, uh, uh, call on, on the example that you told us about the woman who was driving with the car. If a woman is too much in her head because she's focused on the solution to yes. the problem, yes. she might get killed. Yeah, exactly. Isn't that the case? Exactly. Our brain is connected with four million years of life on Earth. And always there's a predator ready to jump on me. Mm -hmm. Long time ago it was the elephant, the black panther, and today is what? It's the car that is coming. So if I don't pay attention because I'm stuck with the problem with my husband, with my wife, so my brain will say, hey, you don't pay attention. So what does the brain do? Downloads the drama from my consciousness to the subconscious. I forget the core of the problem. I start an illness, but in exchange, I'm present to my environment. Okay? So I didn't resolve the problem, but if the brain does not step in, I die maybe inside of a month. Now I have two years to find a solution to the problem. Yeah, it's amazing how it works. Yeah. And there was one interview that I did uh, with a woman who is a therapist in Poland, and she she um, and the interview is called "The Brain Doesn't Know Jokes." So it yes, makes, exactly. It, that's exactly that's it. So whatever we think of, we yes. imagine that it might happen. So, for example, the predator might jump on us. On yes. the thought, the yes. subconscious thought on, for example, a certain color. We see a certain color and it's associated with something that happened in the past and it's yes. in effect our predator in our yeah. mind. Why? Because for the brain, everything that happened can be real. Yeah. Okay, and it like for, 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 the, for the mouse, it's always the cat. Yeah. For the brain, it's always someone who wants to kill me. It's crazy. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. this is why we need to pay attention to our environment. We need to be conscious, and it's the first step in the healing process, consciousness. Yes, and asking the right questions, right? Of course, yeah. but why you ask the right question? To become consciously aware of what happened, yeah. to remember. This is why we say, recall healing, recall what happened in order yeah. to heal. Exactly. Huh? Thank you, Dr. Gilbert, very much f f for, the, for the talk and for the seminar, because I really learned a lot, and I'll take this knowledge, and I want to, to share it with others. So this is what I do. I share what um, uh, people, experts, uh, with their experience, want to share with others. And I hope that people will uh, share this interview yeah. as well. Thank You're very you welcome, and thank you for listening and watching. And I always like to say, don't believe anything, but try it. Try it. Explore yeah. it, and observe yourself, and sense when you're sick, what happened, and you will discover a world. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much for this interview.